you doing, guys? Hope that you have lots of questions for me today. I come out here every single week. Uh, on the weekends, I try and do it. But now, now I'm trying to do it every day if I can. I'm just getting inundated with the amount of phone calls all the time. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? If you can hear me okay, can you give me a little thumbs up? little okay, something, anything? Just making sure the sound is working okay. Looks like it is. So if if you can hear me okay, uh, I'd appreciate a little okay sign. And we're going to be getting into it today. So for all you guys who don't know me, my name is David Ruff. I operate in beautiful Toronto, Canada. Uh, I'm a real estate broker and I'm an agent. We own four companies. We own four properties that we bought earlier this year. All of it is to build cash flow, build individual wealth, get out of the banking system, get out of your own way because the idea of accepting cash for time, it's just the price that you're paying to sell your dream short. Now, it's not to say that you don't need to sell your time for money to get yourself going, but you need to find another way to start generating income so that you can start living your best life. And that's what we want for you. So if we're going to be looking today, uh, it's an interesting topic. What we're going to be covering is what is fiduciary responsibility? Uh, and what is this big word, David? You're kind of bumming me out with this big stuff on a Sunday afternoon. I know. But fiduciary uh, responsibility means for you, means that you're going to be taken care of. What does that mean? Let's take a look, my friends. Uh, what is fiduciary duty? If you just type it in in, in um, Google, it's going to tell you that fiduciary duty refers to a relationship between a fiduciary and the principal beneficiary. What the hell does that mean? Okay. Um, if you go just below on, on the second part, uh, and, and it says people also ask what re fiduciary responsibility means in layman's terms. And it says when someone has a fiduciary duty to someone else, the person has the duty that has the duty must act in a way that will benefit someone else, usually financially. I, I mean, this is probably one of the most important things that you could take away from everything today, that somebody who has fiduciary responsibility has to, must legally, by law, act in the best way for you to benefit. So he must legally do that. So as a realtor and as a broker myself, I must perform in the best outcome for my clients possibly by law, or I could lose my license. The shocking part about this is this is a choice. You can ask your realtor to agree to that duty or not to agree to that duty, which to me is just crazy. Okay, so if we are going to go into the uh, Ontario Real Estate Association form, the Ontario Real Estate Association form has two parts, and it has a form that's called working with a realtor. That form only has two portions in it, and one says that a client, if you choose to be a client, you will have now a fiduciary duty. It says that if you are going to be a customer, you have no fiduciary duty. and But that means that you could work with another agent or something. So if you choose to work with one agent and you sign that form, then you must, he must give you that legal protection. Pretty cool, right? Uh, I think it's cool. If you look under client here, a client relationship creates the highest form of obligation from a realtor. The brokerage and the salesperson have a fiduciary legal responsibility to the client to represent the interests of the client. Do you, do you see that? A legal relationship to have the best interest of the client. The realtor will establish the relationship with the use of the representation agreement. Of course, you're going to have to sign something. Um Once the brokerage and the consumer enter into a client relationship, the brokerage must protect the interests of the client and do what is best for the client. Woo! Did you hear that? <laughs> Once a brokerage and a customer sign that form, the brokerage must protect the interests of the client and do what is best for the client. Legal responsibility. This is huge. What happens if you are a customer and you don't sign with the realtor, what happens? Well, if you go to the same form working with the realtor and read that, it says that uh, they may wish 
to not go under contract. And then a realtor is only obligated to treat every person in the real estate transaction with honesty, fairness, and integrity. But unlike a client, provides a customer with a restricted level of service. What does it do? Services could be that you show them a property, drafting an offer, presenting an offer, an offer, et cetera. So that is a very narrow window, meaning if you want to have advice, well, what price do I, do I put on it? I'm not here to give advice. Uh, where do you think I should buy? I'm sorry, I'm not here to give advice. You're not my client. It's, it's like this is where it's kind of confusing because the way that um, they are changing it, the law just changed because people didn't understand exactly what a customer and a client were, these two different things. But the difference is they're now going to change the customer to self-represented because people kind of understand that. If you think that you are the master of the universe when it comes to real estate in your area, you can operate that way, self-representing. Think of it when you go to court, you're going to represent yourself. You're not going to have a lawyer helping defend you. So this is the same way in real estate is you could choose to have a designated uh, person representing you or you could choose not to have somebody representing you. But it comes, it gets a little bit more complicated because everybody wants to blur the lines. They always want the best of both worlds, but it doesn't really work that way. So if you want to work with somebody without signing a contract that you are working with them, then you're not going to get the better service. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I'm fine with signing with somebody, but show me what services I'm going to get and show me, like prove to me that you're good. So this is where you want to interview one, two, three, five agents. I don't know. Interview some and find one that you click really well with and that you really like because that's the guy that you want to be working with and you want the top end service. And why wouldn't you want that legal protection? Listen, guys, I'm a broker. I have realtors that work for me, but I also buy properties in other parts of Canada and the United States. I have to have those agents representing me. I want the best people. So I interview people in those towns. I, I sign with them so that they have my best interest legally now at, for me. So I not only expect people to sign with us, I also sign with other people. Now, you just don't blindly choose the best person that you have out there. You interview different people to find the one that fits you. Where I think can be a little bit muddled is where I, what I see most of the time is over 90% of agents are coming in and out of the business every two or three years. They, they get in, they get their license, they retire. So everybody always has a cousin, an aunt, a girlfriend, or something who just got their license and they want to help. They want to give them the contract, but then they don't know anything. So then they're in this catch 22. So oftentimes when you're getting your friends and family and everything mixed up all together in your life's business, the biggest purchase of your life, it can sometimes get a little muddled. So I just second think that. Um, all right, you guys. So that's just what I wanted to show you today is the fiduciary responsibility. I think it's kind of important. Um, I, I think people should always be looking at something like that. Anyway, just my thoughts. What do you think? Are you guys buying, selling real estate? What are you doing these days? All of you, you're so silent, man. You didn't even give me one like. You didn't say anything. So maybe you didn't like what I have to say. That's fine. I'm getting dried out. I was outside today. All right, you guys. So what we do is we always try to get people to buy property, sell properties, um, commercial, residential. We also put them into legal entities. We want to pay zero tax. That's the main goal is pay zero tax. So remember, I am not a financial advisor. I'm, I am not an accountant. I am a broker, but a multiple business owner. And we try to tackle these things on a daily basis. This is what we try to do. So I got my new fun little pen here. Um, this, this pen is pretty funky. I've been uh, able to show some people some cool stuff on my TV over here. So what we try to show you is different ways that you can pay no taxes. That that's the main goal, but this isn't like fake. Um, by a show of hands, does anybody ever see anybody who has decided not to pay taxes illegally? Have you ever seen that? Well, of course you have, right? There's all kinds of people who decide not to pay taxes, but you can legally decide not to pay taxes. And this is where, if you want, you could do this in a really fun way. 
if you choose, you can pay 0% tax, but that's up to you. You need to read the tax code in whatever country you're in, in Canada, in the United States, whatever that you want. This is all going to be your decision if you want to pay 0% tax or not. Now, you can do that through a type of permanent life insurance. But this permanent life insurance, I want you to think of it as a cherry, okay? You only do permanent life insurance if it is the absolute last thing, if you have everything lined up. What else do you have to have lined up? Obviously, we're going to have uh, a company opened up. And inside that company is where I want you to start building all of your properties. Buy, start with one, then buy two, buy one home a year, every single year. And only once you have this in the holding company and you have three, three of them built up in the same holding company, these three will all be throwing off $200 each. So maybe you'll have $600 in cash flow per month coming off of it. That's your main goal is to get all this cash flow coming back to you, but you don't ever take it in the payment. You're going to trap it inside the holding company so the homes can keep building wealth for you. And then every three years when you refinance, then you can get your big payout. That's how to do it. So how do homes make money? We make, we make a lot of money on homes and everybody is very, very tripped up because they think that they make money on homes only from cash flow. So what does cash flow mean? Cash flow means that rent might be $1,000. Let's just say rent is $1,000. Can you see that? $1,000, but your, your, your mortgage might be $800. So that's how they'll do the math. Well, that means I have $200 left and that means I have that much money. That's not how this works. That's, that's not correct at all because we have a lot of other expenses. What other expenses do you have? That's my question. Do you have any other expenses besides that? Well, we got a lot of other expenses besides that. What what would we have? We would have all kinds of things. Do you guys want to give me any ideas of what we would have? Number one, insurance. We have property management. Right? Then what do we have? Vacancy. Repairs. And so once you start building all of this into your expenses, you'll find out that you don't have a lot of money left over. Insurance, it really, really, really depends where you live and what province you live in, what state you live in. Property management is normally about 10%. Uh, vacancy should be around 8% and repair should be around 8% if you are correct. Those, those are standard categories that you should be looking at. Standard categories. We got to make sure that you have that included in your estimates. But this is how to retire within a couple of years is if you understand this and understand how to trap the money. So I, I would recommend just be reading what the CRA is going to be telling you. The CRA or the Canadian Revenue Agency has uh, many forms on helping you understand how not to pay taxes anymore. They're the ones that encourage you to pay 0% tax. In fact, they're begging you to please pay 0% tax. You do this by creating jobs and by creating housing those two things. That's all they want is for you to create jobs and create housing. Those are the two things. Um, do you guys have any questions for me on how, how to do any of this? Yes, no, maybe so. So, you know, the real estate market in Toronto is just crashing, right? It's been going absolutely bananas uh, in a terrible way. But what did you expect? The property prices were going up and up and up and up for 20 years. And then after 20 years, they're just crashing all the way down. Um, this is not really a surprise that this is happening. But there's different categories of people. Everybody is confused about real estate. So the, the fact that the dollar is, is going up in value on the world stage, but is losing value, confuses a lot of people. And so that is a really tough part is how can... How can the interest rates be skyrocketing and, and the dollar be skyrocketing? The dollar is only skyrocketing because it's the cleanest toilet in the public bathroom. That's the only reason. Uh, they're still not giving something away. Are you saying homes? Tweel, you're saying homes? They're not giving them away? 
and are a lot cheaper than they were you know, just six months ago. So, uh, yeah, but they're they're going to drop even more. So if you are a cash buyer, do not do not go to buy. But this is what's funny is um, if we were looking before a one million dollar property would have eight hundred thousand dollars of mortgage, and of that eight thousand dollars of mortgage, it would be something like five four thousand dollar payment per month on on that. So you say, okay, David, I could buy a $1 million property for $4,000 a month payment. But now that the properties are $750,000 and they've dropped an entire uh, huge amount, now it's a $5,000 a month payment. And you're like, hang on a second, David, this is ridiculous. How can a more expensive home have a lower payment and a cheaper home have a higher payment. And that's because over here was 1.5% interest and over here is a 6% interest. And it's the interest rates that's changing that. So even though the prices of the homes are dropping, it is the monthly payments that people are affected by. Almost everybody has a monthly payment. So you're not buying a home, you're buying a payment. And you bought an, a, a payment at a very, very cheap rate, but you didn't fix it. So in December, we fixed all of our rates. Oh, so uh, Shindu. So investors can qualify for a lot of different mortgages. You see people owning 20 units. So we deal with people who have 50, 100 units. This is where you always need to have your dream team. And who do you need to build on your dream team? You're going to need a really good real estate agent, a really good mortgage broker or two mortgage brokers. And then you also have to have a lawyer as well in that team. Once you start getting them together, then you need to get your accountant involved and possibly a bookkeeper. Once you start getting these really, really good people together, they're going to start help working with each other. And this is where you have to open another company, put all the properties in a company, never put it in your own name. That's a beginner newbie move. Always put the, the properties in the company name. Your accountant, your lawyer can help you with that. And then you're going to be going for commercial loans where you have a lot of money coming in. It really, really depends. So here, is, get, let me give you an example. If you were going to be buying a property in downtown uh, Toronto for a million dollars and it rented for $2,000 a month, uh, no, the bank is not going to lend you any money based on that property because they're taking on way too much risk. But if you had a million dollar building, let's say in Tennessee, and it rented for $10,000 a month, now they are like, that is a great deal. And the bank is willing to fund that any, any day. So one of the good litmus tests for you is actually just to talk to the bank and see what the bank is going to say. Because if the bank likes the deal, then you should too. The bank's not stupid. So you can get you can get uh, that kind of a deal any day of the week, anytime you want. Did that help at all? You got to get a good banker. Um, but thanks for the question anyway. No one's asking any questions today. Might, might as well and get them out while you can. Sometimes I have some people on from uh, Europe at this time of the day. And they have a, like a load of questions. So I think as people get tired, they have more questions. <laughs> All right, you guys. So that's how you get 20 buildings in there. So even for myself, if I wanted to go buy them in my own personal name, they, they don't really care about that. They're not very interested. But if I bring them forward uh, the right money wise, they're like, yep, accept, we'll accept it right away. And if you found a deal that was something like uh, three quarters of a percent or 1% per month, they will probably take it. No problem. The banks. Can you really find a property with zero down? What does that mean? So this is where we have to break it down because everyone says this all the time that you can get a property with zero down. Can it happen? Yes. How zero down. So in Canada, if you're less than 500,000, you can put down 5%, which is $25,000. Do you see that? 25 grand. So where do you get the 25,000? That's that's the question. So if you're looking for a property 
here. Try to get that 25,000. Now, where can you get that 25 grand? Man, I don't write very nice eh, today. You guys, unbelievable. Uh, where do you get that 25,000? So you can ask your, your mom, your dad, your family. Or, and you also have something called seller take back. Seller take back. Okay, so what does that mean for seller take back? If you talk to the seller and say, hey, buddy, uh, I really like your house. I want to buy it. I know you want $25,000 for the property. I don't have the $25,000. Would you be interested in basically lending me? You're going to be taking the loan on yourself. Like I owe you $25,000. You're going to pass it on to me. And we're going to write a deal that we are taking back the mortgage for you. So this happens often in commercial properties and it happens in multi-residential. It doesn't happen a lot in, in um, residential though. But seller take back mortgages. Um, I have a friend of mine. He bought both of his companies and his personal house, all three on seller take back mortgage. So he didn't pay for any of it. So he got 0% down on all the properties. And by the way, like his properties are whole buildings, like right? big buildings. And his home property is a massive property, four bedroom, four bath. And he got a seller take back mortgage on that. So you can do that as well. So you either, you're either going to be syndicating it through a group of people. So you get your lawyer involved with that one to syndicate it, or you're going to ask the seller to take back the mortgage or you get your family to do it. That make any sense? Good, good. So you can get properties with zero down. Zero down, less than $500,000 is 5%. But that's not if it's an investment. That's if it's for yourself to live in. What happens if it's an investment? If this is an investment, take away the 25% the, um, down because that's not going to work anymore. The bank would require 20% down. That means you would need $100,000. That's a lot different, right? What does happen to that 25K? Now you need 100 grand. Totally different. Totally different story. So what what is it really good for you if you just start off? If you're going to be starting off and you don't have a lot of money, that's where you try to take advantage of the government programs that will allow you to put 5% down, get into the 5% down, 25K down. You get into a property. Oh, sorry. Is that 25K? No, it'd be uh, 100. No, 25K. You, you put your 25K down. You have your families uh, move in, other people. You house hack it. You get other people, friends and family to move in, uh, rent out a room from you and start building some equity that way. That's what you do. Right on. So what we started with today is we we're talking about fiduciary responsibility and we're also talking about the breakdown for you and why you need to get properties because we make money in properties in so many different ways. We make money in uh, all these different ways. I think they're really fun. So what is the first way everybody is always going to flow to this? Cash flow is always the first way that everybody makes money. Now they think cash flow is the end all be all, but that's only newbies. Okay. Brand new investors. This is all that they care about. Okay. But you'll realize that the higher you go on that chain, the less people care about cash flow because the big daddies start coming down. Amortization, amortization and depreciation. So these are massive benefits. This is how we make our money. Cash flow because we have money coming in every single month. Amortization because we don't have to buy the deal all up front. And it's the only deal that you can buy and keep negotiating the deal every couple of years. As you go along, they give you a new interest rate and you can maybe do a lease option on it. Or you can change your interest rate or you can fix the rate or... Um, not fix the rate, or you can take out more money against your home and get a second mortgage or a line of credit. Uh, amortization is what's going to make you tons of money. And depreciation is the tax write-offs that you get. Now, Canada and the United States are a little bit different. You United States is 27.5 years that you get it in. And Canada, do you guys know what it is? It's about 40 years. What does that mean? Canada is 4% per year. On average, most buildings are 4% per year. So if you have a million dollar building, you're going to have $40,000 of depreciation every single year. They can write off your profits. So this is how you make money 
But remember, cash flow is only $100, $200 a month. That This isn't going to be the money that makes you money. It's the amortization of the loan, which is how I say we always make money on our money. Depreciation, which is a tax write-off. And in Canada, where I am, 40 years is how long it takes to fully depreciate a building. Don't you always want your cash working for you? Okay, absolutely. I mean, we always need to have our cash working for you. That's how we make our money, make more money. So what do you mean though? Don't you always want your cash making money? That would mean that what I'm showing you means that it's not always making you money. So Mr. Big Fun, I need more, more explanation. What do you mean? Don't you always want to? Absolutely. That's the key to making money. If you're not finding ways to have money being made for you while you sleep, then you're not doing it right. My wife and I, well, I don't even know. We probably have 12 or something different revenue seams. No, but this is what I'm talking to you about, Mr. Big Fun. So I wish I could go back on my screen here. The the le the less cash flow, that's $200. So let's go on on do this again then, okay? If we have, I'm going to abbreviate everything. Cash flow, amortization, then we have depreciation. I, I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna have to spell it all out. Amortization, cash flow, depreciation. So how much? Let's just say we're gonna have to take a much bigger house, okay? We're gonna have to take a bigger property. Cash flow maybe only be two hundred dollars a month. But the amortization on that loan, where are we going to find the amortization? So that is how long we get to keep the loan. So the amortization, as we amortize it at 6% in, uh, interest, but it actually is 17% inflation right now. What is the difference between 6% and 17%? It's 11%. So I make 11% profit on my money every single every single year just because of that depreciation is the big amount so 11 percent on the building so this is i'm saying 200 dollars cash flow this would be a, like a 100k property or something like that okay so if i have 200 dollars cash flow but i'm making 11 percent of my amortization that means i made eleven thousand dollars this is two thousand Let's put this in dollars so you're not going to make any mistakes. I would be making $11,000 per year here. If it was cash flow 200 a month for, for 12 months, what does that work out to be, guys? Give me some numbers. What does that work out to be? $2,400. Bucks, 2, depreciation. How much would I get on depreciation? I would get $4,000 on depreciation. Appreciation, what do we normally see? maybe 5%. So you might make $5,000. And this is what I'm trying to tell you is that if we had cash flow of $2,400, $11,000 through amortization, $4,000 in depreciation, $5,000 through appreciation, this is the small daddy. We don't really care about this one. This isn't the, the reason why we do real estate. This is the reason why we do real estate. This is where I make my money. This is not where I make my money. Does that make any sense? We're always going after the big money. That's what we want, the big dollars. So that's why I'm saying just pay attention to how we get our money to make more money. That's how we do it. Hey, guys, rough, rough uh, chainsaw carving is on here. That is my brother. He carves the most amazing stuff. If you guys haven't seen it, you should be going over to uh, Rough Cut Chainsaw Carvings. Uh, if you're on YouTube right now, you can go over to TikTok, go to Rough Cut Chainsaw Carvings. Everyone here, too, you should be going there because he makes some awesome stuff. Uh, Mr. Big Fun, you said it makes sense. Good, good. I hope that you understand now. So cash flow is part of it, but cash flow is the minor part of it. When you are first investing, when you are first trying to figure out real estate is the number one thing that everyone looks for. That's the, because that's what they know, right? But there's so much that you don't know. And so why on earth would these massive billion trillion dollar companies like BlackRock, Blackstone come in and buy 10,000 homes at a time? Trust me, they're not doing it to make their $200 per home. Per month they're doing it for the big 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 money that's how they make the big money anyway 
so I'm glad that that helped out you guys. So what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to get you to that place where you would be able to do this on your own. I want you guys to be able to make some money on your own and be safe when you're going to be when you're going to be doing it. So I suggest what we started off today talking about was with fiduciary responsibility. You need to make sure that your clients, that your agents that are working with you are doing so in your best interest. You guys, I'm throwing out all this help all the time. This I don't make any money off of this. Can you guys just give me a like? I got zero likes here. Come on. I'm helping out a lot. Just give me some likes. And if you like it at all, if I give you any value, go over to my YouTube channel. I'm just trying to get to a thousand people over there. If you can. All right, you guys. So um, do you have any other questions when it comes to um, real estate? Hey, thanks guys for the likes. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, MK true. You said that was excellent. I'm glad. So hopefully you learned a couple of things, but I want to help you do some more. So listen, I've been doing this for 15 years. I've read a thousand books. I don't even know like hundreds of books on it. Um, and then I always put it into practice. Remember reading it doesn't really help you. That doesn't do anything. You need to actually put it into practice. Thanks for it. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Big Fun is saying, thank you for explaining things in a manner you understand. That's what I'm here for. So listen, I, I've, I've done this for so long and I'm looking into these uh, books and it, it's complicated stuff, but I try to bring it down so that all of us can get it. Um, MK True, you said you're a realtor and investor already. Great. You're 18 years old or you have been in there for 18 years. I'm guessing you have been doing it for 18 years. That's great. Uh, MK True, what city do you live in? Do you live in Canada, United States, Europe? Where are you? And like, just give me an idea. Are you in a metro city or in a, a small city? Like what kind of place? I'm just curious. So uh, for you guys who don't know, I, I my name is David Ruff. I live in Toronto, um, Toronto, Ontario. Been here forever. I don't know, 20 years. Bay Area. Nice. Beautiful. I've only been there once. Been there with my dad. I haven't been there enough. The weather is beautiful there. I mean, the weather is nice here in the summertime, but in the winter is hell. <laughs> San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, I knew what you meant. My dad took me there. You know, I got some fond memories. I did the typical things, you know, walk around Fisherman's Wharf, go down to Alcatraz, you know, that type of stuff. But I wish I was back. Great weather there. Um, all right. So you're in the Bay Area. Can you tell me a little bit more? Um, number one, how do you do residential or commercial? Uh, and now listen, you guys, in the States and Canada, where I am, the laws are different, but they're almost the same. So the depreciation in the United States, 27 and a half years, Canada's 40 years. Okay. It's a different scale. Um, so it's very, very different. Uh, Freddie, you're from the 416 uh, on YouTube. Hey, buddy, how are you? Uh, Freddie, if you have any questions, just put them down on YouTube. I'll be able to answer you at the same time. Um very interesting market now. I mean, it's a very interesting market in Canada, United States, absolutely everywhere. So where are you going to see the biggest bloodbaths in residential is in the biggest cities. This is where you're going to get hit when you're going to be in big cities, Toronto, Vancouver in Canada, something like that. In the US, San Francisco is going to be one of the worst hit, New York, LA. These are the places that will see the biggest declines because they had the biggest gains. That makes sense, right? Um. Hey, David, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. He comes on live all the time. Uh, nice to see you. Um, thanks very much. Absolutely. I know you couldn't come on last Sunday. It was okay. It was good to have you here now. Um, so how can I buy a fixer with the least cash? So how you got to do that in the United States, since you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, you can buy with only 3% down. So you should be taking advantage of that for your personal home. Remember, you have to make sure that you are using every bit of dollars that you can. Uh, 750K listed. So you listed your home. Nice. I would be dumping my home too if I was in a place like that. So there's only two types of territories, right? Um, in the United States, you have generally, right, Republican-led states and Democratic-led states. Canada, it's liberal and, and conservative, right? Very, very similar. And so if you are looking at these two, yeah, the uh, FHA loans, but you don't have that in Ireland. But so if you have those two, remember there's two people, and this is what I li always like to give the example of. So if you have one guy who's very, very, very good with money over here, and he loves his dollars, okay? 
and he loves dollars. But then you have another dude. Listen, guys, I can't draw, okay? <laughs> See how I'm going to put his hands up in the air? And this guy is partying every day. Which guy do you want to um, party with? I want to party with this guy. Who do I want to invest my money with? I want to invest with the this guy, this real bum who's very sound and savvy. So you need to put all of your dollars into provinces that respect money and live wherever you want. If you want to live in that kind of part place, you can too. So what does that mean in the U.S.? I wouldn't be investing in uh, uh, anywhere in California. I would only be buying in um, in like Nevada or Tennessee or Florida or something like that, where you're going to have really, really good cash flow on your money. Um, why do we always say that you should be buying there? Now, I don't live in the places that I invest. I think that is the biggest mistake people make is they must invest right where they live because that's not always the best deal. I say fall in love with the deal, not with the area. And so if that is going to be the case, there's two things that you need to be always watching for. Um, you need to be watching for rent increase. This is what you need is rent increases. If you are a landlord, you want to increase the rent as much as you can. And then eviction. Now, those are the two most contentious things that you, you can deal with when you're a landlord. And so you have to balance. You want to buy in a place that lets you raise rent as much as you want and you need as low as you want. So let's give an example. In Canada, 24 months to evict in Quebec. If you move out to Alberta, three days. So which is safer for a landlord? I'm asking you. If somebody decides to stop paying completely, absolutely, completely, he says, I don't want to pay you anymore because I don't feel like it. Where would you rather be? You would rather be in the place that lets me evict somebody for non-payment. Also, for rent increases, a lot of places will only let you increase it by 1% per year, 2% per year. But then you have other places that is unlimited. So where would you like to be? You want to buy in a place that lets me have unlimited rent increases. That is where you want to go. Um, Freddie, from YouTube, you were mentioning three months in Toronto. Uh, now, it's very, very, very different from what's in practice and what is written. In Toronto, they say three months is how long it will take to evict. That is true. And that's what's stated. But what is reality? In reality, it takes anywhere between 12 months to 14 months to evict somebody because of how backed up they are. There's tens of thousands of people who do not want to pay their mortgage and the systems are so backlogged. That's how long it actually takes for you to evict somebody. So three months in Toronto is only stated that's on, it's on the website, but this is not in practice. And that's why it's not just studying what they are saying that's uh, it doesn't matter what's printed online you got to make sure you're actually seeing what is actually actually happening in real life in new brunswick where we deal with properties out in new brunswick so it's the maritime part of canada uh over there they state that you can have somebody out in two weeks but in reality it's two months okay that's better right that's somewhere in the middle and so you want to be fanatical about only finding places that you can invest in that will look after your best interest. Um, MK True, you said you own and keeping yours, but remodeling yours. I'll move into another and use the FHA 3% down. Nice. Always use the best uh, FHA loans that you can. Do I invest in long distance property? Yes, all the time. It's the only way I do it. Landlord-friendly states, correct. So wherever you live, if it's states, provinces, whatever it is, just be fanatical about following up on the different places and whatever the government is. I will only move if I make more money somewhere else. So it, I'm always trying to make the most money wherever I go. Um, also, this is another uh, important principle. Let me uh, write this down. So how do we make money on, on a property? Uh, do I invest in Toronto? No, I don't invest in Toronto. Not yet. Uh, the prices will keep falling, so I'm, I wouldn't invest right now. How do we make money on a property? Obviously, like I was saying, we make some cash flow, right? So normally on cash flow, now let's write Toronto up here. So if we had a place in Toronto, let's say, we, we rent normally for 3% of the total per year. This is how much rent you make, 3% per year when we rent it to somebody. 
Okay. So you just take the price and divide it by 3% and that's how much you're going to rent it for. Now we are hoping most people hope that we're going to make like 10% or something like that per year in appreciation, meaning the, the unit will go up in value. So if you calculate this, there, you're hoping to make your rent money and you're hoping to make appreciation. So this is a high appreciation market. We're depending on this money to go up. But let's say that you buy in a B-class city in a smaller town. And let's just say that you buy it in Calgary, for example. If you were going to buy in Calgary, Alberta, this would be kind of inverted. You would now make about 10% on rent and 3% on appreciation. So it's inverted. So if you buy in a high market, like a mega city, you're going to be paying, you're going to be making the same combination of money, but this is guaranteed money. This is gamble money. This is guaranteed money. This is hope. So we can call appreciation hope. We just hope it's going to go up. And why do we say it's going to go up? Well, because it's gone up for the last 10 years. Okay, well, a blind monkey throwing darts also could have hit the right stock over the past 10 years and made money. If you didn't make money in the past 10 years, there's something wrong. So you can keep making money, but I would prefer more guaranteed money. I want less risk money and more guaranteed money. Next to this appreciation, you can't read, and this screen doesn't help, but I call that hope money. Hope money. And I want less and less hope money in a market like we've been in for the past 10 years. You own in noisy, but the property taxes are now high. So excuse my, my ignorance when it comes to geography, but I'm, I'm guessing you're seeing Boise and is that Idaho? Where's in, where's that Boise? Yeah. All right, but taxes are high. I don't know what that state is, okay? I, I'm sorry, but different states and different provinces. Yeah, in Idaho. Okay, I was right. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> okay, so it really depends. Remember, the state's got to get their money from somewhere. So a lot of the states that people are very happy about, Texas, and woo, they pay 0% uh, taxes to the, the state. But you, if you don't pay taxes to the state, they're going to get it in property taxes. California has some of the highest taxes on your personal income in the country, but their property taxes are very, very low. Some of the lowest in the country. And so you kind of, that's why we, we never pull one data set aside and only measure from that. We're going to look at all the data sets all together to make sure that it's okay. Uh, Freddie, um, you said you're from 416 and 905. You're from both. So you're from both parts of Toronto. Uh, how are you liking this stuff, Freddie? Do you have any questions when it comes to any of this stuff? Let me know. Big boom there. Yeah. California. Buyers are going there. Buyers are going to California. I thought California had the largest outflows in the last 40 years. Oh, you mean um, to Idaho? I mean, everywhere that is getting taxed. It, it, listen, if I was living in California, I would be getting the hell out too, because California keeps raising the taxes up and up. What do they want to charge us? 60% of, of taxes. Absolutely crazy. Who on earth wants to pay that? And if you do make any sizable amount of money, I would get the hell out too. And I mean, everybody that was there is leaving. So, uh, hey, Freddie, no problem, man. That's what I'm here for. Thanks so much. But uh, if you have anything, just write it below. I'll, I'll help you. So everyone's leaving. Now, there are some good things and bad things that happened through the last two and a half years. What happened? Everyone had to start working from home, right? But everybody wants to continue working from home, but that's also a big danger to them because the moment that an employer is going to do the math and figure out, okay, I don't need him to work from home. Listen, your only benefit to you before the pandemic was that you yourself were a human living in that area. As soon as he realizes he can do it online, why would he pay you a Canada wage, an American wage, when he can pay somebody in India to do it for a dollar an hour? And they'll just get them to do the job. So 
it's going to change things. Now, people are starting to try to work from home in all different areas. So they're going to migrate to places that are much, much cheaper. Now, people have, um, an, uh, they don't know. We've been so long since we've been in a recession that people forget taking they're, they're on another planet that they don't remember anymore what happened. Of course, it's your privilege to see that the prices are dropping, but nothing has happened yet. The prices are dropped. Yeah, yeah. Some people are going to get hurt, but a minor amount. The majority of people are sitting on massive amounts of wealth in their homes and their bank accounts. We haven't seen any properties that are defaulting into foreclosure. We haven't seen anything like that. I'm old enough that I remember 2007, 8, 9, when this was all happening and people were falling apart and they were moving to other parts of the country that are cheaper and moving in two or three families into a two bedroom condo. I remember that. So when tough times are going to be here, people will leave and go to those areas. And we are heading into that time right now. One of my books, I always suggest it every time I'm coming on here. Uh, I would read this book, The End of the World is Just the Beginning by, by Peter Zian. Or you could watch his one and a half hour uh, a presentation he gives online. He's online all the time. Uh, watch a presentation that he's giving a slideshow and describing it to you. But you're going to see what's happening with the world in a different lens. So right now, everybody is tooling their own countries up. The United States is doing it. Canada is doing it. We're starting to build everything we need in Canada or in the United States. So as we go down that road, what's going to happen? It's pretty clear what's going to happen, right? Right. Everything will be built here. It'll be much safer for the countries, et cetera, et cetera. But the problem, we operate on much higher costs. So we will see inflation continuing for many years. And so you got to figure out what are you going to do about that? Because how do you get through this? That's the question. Because you can't control how much money they print. You can't control how many taxes. All you can control is I got to make more money. And that's where I recommend getting different revenue streams and how you're going to do that. You always do it through what is the keystone to wealth is always to real estate, but then you can add other cherries to it if you want. Um, oh, Dave, buddy, in Ireland. Uh, yeah, you really, really should. Okay, so his name is Peter Zian. Okay. He has like a, a one and a half hour, watch something like that. He's been doing it for so, so many years. He's absolutely fantastic. So don't look at some, well, you can, I've actually went and looked at 2015 and saw what he was predicting. And then it's nice to judge him by that. But if you look at something like from 2022, like right away, watch his one and a half hour presentation. It'll blow your mind. It's really, really, really good. Hey, Tony. Yeah, buddy. I'm trying to come on more, but I've just been so, so, so busy in, in the past 18 months, my wife and I have opened up four companies We've hired 10 people. Um, I bought four different properties. Uh, we have been busy like crazy. And this is where I have an issue with a lot of people who are all over the place. They end up just being teachers, you know, like this is all they do. They're on YouTube every single day. They just do teaching programs and that's it. I actually do everything that I'm saying. I figured all this stuff out and I operate every day. So it's, it's a very, very different place. Uh, Steve, you said, do you like crypto? Yeah, of course. I've been mining crypto since 2013. Started mining Bitcoin 2013. Um, it's nice to see me back. Yeah, thanks, Tony. Nice to see you too. Yeah, four companies. Yep, we've been working hard. Uh, my wife and I. My wife is a genius, man. I, I, I love her. She's best thing since sliced bread. She's amazing, but uh, she's never come online. I don't think that she ever will. She's just not that type of person. She's uh, she's the the smart tech support behind the scenes. Well, I'm the one that gets yelled at. <laughs> Every time I post anything online on YouTube, TikTok is like the where all the crazies come out, and Twitter, um, because. When, you, when you're when you like me and we're putting out so much content, we have an entire team. Thank you very much, Glenn, Tessa, Ray, all in the Philippines that help us chop up all our footage and post it everywhere. I would never have time to do it all. Uh, they all work for us full time and they help put all this information out there. But we get so many comments, 90%, at least probably more, 95% of all the comments are just hate. People are pissed in the planet today and it doesn't really matter what you say i can say guess what guys i really like the color red 
and I'll have people say, you bastard, <laughs> I hope you die. <laughs> All kinds of crazy stuff. Anyway, so much hate out there, man. Don't let the haters put you down. Scroll past them, even in your life. Even I have some siblings, friends that were that way. I'm like, all right, bye. And they seen you. Uh, so just keep on. I'm trying to encourage you. Don't let the haters keep you down. Keep your dreams going. You know what I mean? Um, Tony, you're saying see Manny Co Co Koshbin? Who's that? Who's Manny Koshbin? Uh David in Ireland, you're saying, are they all property companies? Uh, so no, two of the companies are holding companies and two of the companies are operating companies. So one of the operating companies is inside. Um, we operate do, doing spray foam and the other company uh, operates in real estate. We buy and sell real estate. I'm a real estate broker, have real estate agents that work with me. Um. I, I don't know. Dennis, what are you saying on YouTube? Sorry, buddy. I don't get that. Um, hey, Dave from Ireland there. You th think I give great advice? Thank you very much. I'm actually trying to help you. Do you guys, you wouldn't even understand, I guess. Nobody would really do it. It's it's like a full-time job just to be able to be online. And we have to pay thousands of dollars in order to have people help us put it all up. We're only doing it to try to help people. And uh, so it's it's kind of crazy how much hate that you get. It's uh, unbelievable. Um, oh, Tony, the greatest commercial real estate investor in the United States. Hmm. Manny Koshbin. I'm going to have to go look this guy up. Uh, Manny Koshbin. I'll go look him up now in the United States. Oh, man, it's so much easier than in Canada. It's so much easier than in Canada. In, ca in Canada, we don't get 3% FHA loans to put down. We don't get 1031 exchanges where you never have to pay tax on any real estate transaction, regardless if you sell. That's crazy. You don't get bonus depreciation like you do in the United States. In the United States, if you don't make money in real estate, then something's wrong with you. I mean, it's just so much easier in, in the U.S. to make money. Canada has so many rules. Crazy. So many rules. And not good ones, by the way. It makes it really, really tough. Um, all right, you guys. Um, I'm going to get going soon, but, uh, you know, I don't have to go like this second. But if you have any questions for me in the meantime, I'm going to be able to take them for you. Um, anything to do with uh, building companies, building companies um, or real estate, commercial, residential, and how the breakdown is. I was always interested in how the plumbing works behind it. I needed to figure that part out. You need to build a really good um, team to do that. Addy Koopa, how are you, buddy? Uh, I've talked to Addy on the phone many times. How are you, buddy? Uh, he said, nice to see you again. Hope that you're doing, keep doing an amazing job. Thank you, bud. I could use all the encouragement I can get. It's costing me a lot of money to do this, but we have some great people down in the Philippines to help us put out this stuff. So we like you guys uh, helping us out. We appreciate it. Um, so this is question time, you guys. Uh, Addy Koopa, you're jumping on very, very end. Um, we, we put out a lot of videos on YouTube. So you guys, thank you very much for liking this stuff. If you like it, you know, it helps the algorithm go out. So give me some more likes if and it helps me. And if the, the guys that are on TikTok, if you want to go over to our, my YouTube channel, same name, and that would help me out a lot. I'm just trying to get to a thousand people over there so we could do uh, better lives and we have um, access to more stuff. Um, Freddie, uh, are you more interested in commercial multi-unit uh, properties as an investment? That's a good question, Freddie, from YouTube. So why uh, why would I right now not be in commercial today? So commercial, where which direction do you think it's going down? Is commercial going up or down? Because we, I think that it would be pretty safe for us to say that commercial businesses are going down right now. So if commercial is going down, I believe that there's going to be more empty units that are going to be coming up and it means the prices are going to be coming down. Um, that is one reason why I'm not going into it because we're just at the beginning of a recession. Also in commercial, what is the amount down that you have to put? So normally they only give you a 60% loan to value, which means I have to come up with 40% down, which is a lot of money. 
I have to come up with 40% cash. Whereas in multi-residential, what do we need to put down? 20% down on multi-residential. So multi-residential right today is where you'd want to be. Now, it is much better to, to actually graduate into commercial. Almost everybody, all real estate people will graduate into commercial. Why do you always want to graduate into commercial? Why would you want that? Addy, Tony, I know you guys have answers for this. Why do you want to graduate to commercial? Uh, and Dave from Ireland. Yes, I'll be live next. I'm, I'm live every day at 7 p.m. Eastern. Somewhere in the 7 o'clock, 7 or 7.30 Eastern time in Canada. 7 to 7.30. Okay, Dave. Um, Freddie. No, it's not always 35%. It's usually 40% down. Um, woo, you guys are getting a triple. Yes. Triple a lease. Or do you mean triple net lease, Tony? Cause yes, that's correct. Triple net lease. Um, so triple net means that the owners, the, the, the tenants, not the owner pays for the, the, um, insurance and taxes and maintenance. You want them to deal with it. You don't want to deal with it. So commercials always where you're going to end up but it's not the way to build the most money really, really quickly. Um, you want to get into 20% down, which is the multi-residential. And I'm looking at multi-residential. Obviously, I'm going to be buying a lot more multi-residential as we're heading into this recession. Um, we're just starting. Adi Koopa, do you see a recession coming or are we already in a recession based on the two consecutive negative GDP? This is a very good question, Addy. I don't care who you are, what you say. It doesn't really matter if you try to change the definition of a recession. We knew that we were in a recession back in April. Everybody did. So whether or not we know the technical definition is two consecutive quarters, everybody knew that they were in a recession in the second quarter, not after the second quarter finished. We all knew it. You could see the prices and the companies collapsing. So everybody knew it. And then July 1 was the official start. But then the um, in the U.S., they're trying to say, no, no, we're going to change the definition of a recession. So this is where you have to get past what all crazies are telling you out there and figure it out for yourself. A recession is businesses are slowing down. Are you not seeing home prices slow down, businesses slow down, stocks are slowing down, crypto is slowing down, everything is slowing down. So you have to be very, very smart and know that you are in it and know that it's going worse. You're correct. Negative GDP is happening everywhere. Uh, Tony, you said, would I invest in Orangeville? No, I would not invest in Orangeville right now. The only time I'd invest in Orangeville is if there was a large property with uh, like a, a, a some type of farm or a house on it that you could buy. You could mortgage 80% of it. And if you could do that and you knew that you were in the path of progress where you would be able to subdivide later, and put multiple residents on it, then I would do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that at all. Uh, are you prepared for a recession? Damn, Skippy, I've been preparing for it for uh, for since 2010. I put a portion of my money every single month. You know, I started mining Bitcoin in 2013, so I've been buying Bitcoin and Ethereum. Since 2013, I have many miners that operate for me uh, 24 hours a day. In addition, since 2010, I'm always purchasing gold, always purchasing gold, and I'm always purchasing silver. I keep buying gold and silver over and over and over and over again. But remember, never keep them in your home. Always keep them in a safety deposit box right? Because your home insurance would never cover that. You put it at a safe place or you vault it with another company. You keep buying that because what happens in a recession? So I got, I got something really, really fun to show you guys. You're going to love this. Okay. Woo. We're going to, we're going to do some uh, really fun, fun math. Okay. This is about the, the, the print. Let's see if this works. Uh, is, is that how to do it? Can you guys see here? I'm going to try to change this a little bit. This is how the it it the whole system works. We're going to take this and we're going to go in red. Okay? Say that's a linear line. Can you guys see that? I was hoping that you could see that a little bit better. Okay? 
let's say that is the the line of the economy. The economy is always, always, always growing. Okay, so this is going to go the same if we are talking about housing or whatever. So let's say this green. I'm going to put uh, green H for housing. Housing goes like this. Do you see that line? So it goes cheaper and expensive. Expensive would be up on the top of the bumps. Okay, the low parts of the bumps are when they're cheap. So we know that the longer you hold on to real estate, the more, 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 and more that it's going to make money. But if you are looking here, this is when something is expensive. This is when something is cheap. Expensive, cheap. But you know that you're going to keep making money. So if I just hang on to housing, I know I'm going to make money. If I buy gold and silver, I know it's going to make money. But watch this crazy business. Are you ready for this? If you look at gold, gold has an inverse relationship to housing and the stock market. It would, it would kind of look like this. So now that you're looking at these two colors, if the two colors show up very well, when gold is at a very, very high price back in 2011, stock markets were very low. When homes and stock market is high, like they were at the beginning of the year, gold is low. And, and it keeps flipping back and forth and back and forth over the decades. So... In 2010, uh, 11, when gold was very, very expensive, I was buying homes. And then over the past few years, as real estate was going crazy, I'm stocking up more gold and silver here. So every time that we do this flip, I, I sell off all my gold at this point and buy, I sell off all my homes here, buy, buy uh, gold. Up here, I would sell all my gold and buy homes. And you just keep flipping back and forth every time you do it. Uh, Freddie, from um, from YouTube, any particular areas I like? I like only buying in places that protect landlords. So what does that mean? You only want to buy in areas where the government loves landlords and are going to help landlords. More tax credits for landlords. I can raise the rent as much as I want. I can evict people for non-payment in like a week. That's where I would be looking at places like Tennessee, Florida, Texas, or in Canada, places like Alberta. Um, Addie Cooper. So the, sorry, sorry. There's so many questions here. Good questions. Uh, will you be live next week? Dave, absolutely. I'll be live next week. I'll also be live tomorrow. I'll be live almost every day. Uh, they are saying large fund managers are interested in single homes. Why? Because it's the, when they buy condos, they have to submit and bow to the condo corporations and homeowners associations. Nobody wants to do that ever. They want to buy a building or a home and put three units in it. Uh, Blackstone is building these micro units where they take even a one bedroom unit and make four micro units out of them. So they want to be able to have control of the, the unit. They call them freehold buildings because you're free to do what you want with them. And they don't buy condos. That's not their business. They want to be able to build them however they want. And they're buying 10,000 at a time. 10,000. Are you crazy? Isn't that crazy? Uh, Freddie, yes. Am I going beyond Canada? Absolutely. Um, this is Freddie from YouTube. Uh, Freddie, uh, where I really like Florida Panhandle up north, like Jacksonville or in Memphis, Tennessee. That's where I would be looking. Um, Adi Koopa, do you see Bitcoin going lower? Yes, absolutely. Or has it always reached the bottom? Uh, and we are in an uptrend now. No, it's got much farther to go. Way, way, way farther to go. You haven't even started to see the lows, in my opinion. Listen, guys, when you see what happened in 2008 happening again, when we start to see everybody selling their their Sea-Doo's and their ski machines and their cottages and their Porsches and all the extra things in life. When you see that, that's when to be buying. Back in 2009, you could have bought a Porsche for 70% off. At that point, Bitcoin will be bupkis. But you see, I'm not buying Bitcoin for today. I'm not buying it for today. I'm buying Bitcoin for when I turn 55 or 60. So I don't care what the price is. I have a certain amount. Like, I don't care if you put $20 a week. Just put $20 a week and keep stacking it over and over and over again. That's it. 
And as you keep stacking all of this, you're going to look back when you're older and be really happy. Um, how long are these ups and downs take? Months or years? Uh, so normally, normally, if we look historically, it normally runs around 18 months is the down. But that is when we're going to be talking about stock market. Here is something that is really interesting. How long did it take for the stock market in 2008 to correct? Does anyone have an idea? Does anyone want to give me a, a, a question? In 2008, when it was crashing, home prices went like this and cratered until 2010. And then it took four years of slowly coming back up. So we didn't get back to the same level at the top until what year? 2014. So the, the main difference, the main takeaway for this was it was a two-year downspout, two years down, four years up. Two years down, four years up. So you lost six years to come up with the same amount of money that you had before. Absolutely crazy. So it could take two years of down. That's what I'm saying. Could go down for 18 months, but could take you five, six, seven years to recover to the same amount. Uh, yeah, Dave from Ireland. Yes, I was going live for about a year, once a week, but uh, I'm inundated with questions these days. So I thought it would help people if I try and come on once a day. Do I also invest in stocks? Absolutely. So my purchases in stocks and in Bitcoin are regular. I have them pre-set up. So a certain amount of money goes into stocks and goes into uh, Bitcoin every single month. So I have a, a purchase that's happening all the time. I don't even see it. You know, I know it's coming. I can see it in the bank account, but I'm not actioning it. I already set it up that way. But what do I keep buying all the time? I'm usually buying only VOO, which is an e ETF of the whole market and Warren Buffett shares. How much has the cost of mortgage gone up? Gone up through the roof. Uh, mortgages went from one and a half to six and a half percent. So mortgages have gone crazy. And payments are bananas. The average payment has gone up over $1,000 per home. How long will it take for the housing market to recover? Probably about four years. Uh, Dave from uh, Ireland. Yes, uh, same time, but not quite as late, right? It normally would come on about seven. So uh, imagine I've been on here for over an hour, an hour 15 already. So uh, I came on a little bit late. So something like that. So whatever the time is now, like what is two hours ago? That's, that's what I would be. Uh, Tony, yeah. So like right now, this is what I was showing some people. Maybe this was before. Um, we had a client of mine that I was dealing with. Um, it's a race, all this. This is crazy. I, I couldn't believe this poor guy, man. Unbelievable. He has a $500,000 mortgage. Okay. $500,000. Do you know what his payment was before? His payment before was $2,500. His unit now dropped to $400,000 and his payment is now three hundred and thirty-five hundred. dollars So his, the, the, the value of his unit has dropped so much, but his payment has gone up. And you ask, how is that possible? So this is where all these newbies that go, yay, the price has dropped. No, it hasn't. This has dropped only for cash buyers. For all us other losers that use mortgages, right? The payment has gone up, hasn't gone down. So let's talk about this one client. The one client says to me, Dave, uh, what am I going to do? And I'm like, I don't know. What are you going to do? He goes, well, I could put it on my credit card, the extra $1,000 a month. I don't have it. How much money do you have left on your credit card? Five months, $5,000 left on his credit card. So what's going to happen at the end of five months? What are you going to do? He goes, I'm going to lose my house. So what is his investment strategy? hope that's not a good investment strategy you have to be diversified so payments the prices have gone down but the payments are up and most people are on payments so when this starts killing people then you're going to see the market really react that nothing has happened already you think like this what has happened so far is the first inning now it all depends on what the governments do right 
if the governments go back and start pivoting and start reducing rates back, everything will go back to normal. If they keep raising rates, it's going to go bad. But September 6th in Canada, they're probably going to raise the rates another 1%. So that means you'll lose another 10% off of all your homes. Um, Freddie from uh, YouTube. Yes, I want to be very well-rounded with investments. You have to be. If you're not, you're going to get smooshed. So that's why I say keep reading books. Keep reading, reading, reading. Read as much as you can. I went and picked up a book. It wasn't that good. But, you know, like I just bought this book on, look at this, the seven investments the government will pay you to make. I, I'm like, well, I bought it based on the title. I read it in a day. You know, like I'm interested. How do I get paid? So I I wouldn't suggest it. But, you know, if you haven't read, I, I've read it every one of his other books. So maybe it wasn't as good to me because I've read his other books. But I'm just saying, Always be looking for ways to diversify your income. But good question, um, Freddie. People are pressed to sell. I mean, there's a lot on the market right now, but you haven't seen anything yet. There's going to be a lot more coming. Yeah, and the people who've, who've bought in the past two years, especially the people who bought in 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 the past uh, year, they're the ones that are going to get hurt. But where are the prices today? The prices today are only sitting where they were last August. <laughs> So it only hurts you if you bought in January to now. Okay. So the prices were here last August and they're here this August. They just had a blip in the middle. So even if you bought a year ago, you're fine. You haven't seen anything yet. What's going to hurt you is if you had a huge mortgage, their mortgage payments are going to be bananas. They're going to be through the roof. Um. Addy Koopa, what happens if the mortgage rate hits uh, trigger rates? Everyone will lose. Everyone will lose their homes. It'll be absolute mayhem. 40% of people in Canada and the United States own their homes, no mortgage, so they're not going to get hurt. But how are they going to get hurt? Because they were banking on that house, paying them for their retirement for the rest of their lives. So when they go to cash it out, they're not going to have the money, and there could be a problem with old folks' homes not being able to pay for it and so forth. So it, it could be very, 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 very messy. I mean, like really messy. Uh, Tony, you locked up for five years fixed 7.5 months ago. Good job, buddy. That's when I, I was telling everyone to lock all their rates at that time. So maybe you were on live with me. I don't know. I was telling everybody I knew and their dog to fix all their rates. I fixed all my rates. Um, I, I, this is what I didn't understand. And I kept telling people it's the lowest interest rates in 5,000 years of recorded history, lowest interest rates in 5,000 years of history. What are you waiting for? Why are you not fixing it? And everyone's like, well, I want to see how low it will go. Lowest rate in 5,000 years. How is, how is that not, <laughs> not the time to fix? I don't know. So nobody was doing it, whatever. Not my problem. I, I, I tried to help. Um, Freddie from YouTube, God forbid. Yeah, it's going to cause a lot of problems. And and this is the thing is you, you don't know what damage this is going to cause 10 years from now. In fact, you can figure it out, right? But this is what perpetually happens. When you have these big studies that are done, they find out that the parents didn't have enough money to buy good food for the kids. So they bought junk food, like all McDonald's for the kids and said it's cheaper, right? But then they had developmental problems. And then there's other problems that come down when the parents lose their money on the homes. Now, old folks' homes are overwhelmed. And then now a lot of kids have to go and buy properties with another unit in the back, an auxiliary dwelling unit, ADU, in the backyard to have their parents. And what does that do? They need bigger homes. Now we have to rebuild cities. Like this is really, really, really far reaching. Um, but right today we have record of the amount of equity in people's homes and the record of equity, uh, money in people's bank accounts. So nothing has happened yet. Nothing has happened. Everything that you've seen right now is an appetizer to the main course. Nothing has really happened. Why? Because the only thing that has changed from then to now is that people can't afford to buy a new mortgage. They can't get approved. That's it. Once people are losing their homes, getting foreclosed on, can't make the payments, then the real pain is going to start. <laughs> That's when the pain starts. Uh, Cabo Verde is great. Yeah, you've been on here uh, before talking about Cabo Verde. Uh, I, I've never, I've never done that before. Um, 
is now a good time to buy or wait? No, man. Don't don't even think about buying now. Not even not even a little bit. <laughs> don't even think about it. Crazy. Um they'll go private before that happens. Yeah, for sure. Yep, Freddie from YouTube. Yep. Try and hold on as long as they can. I mean, that's what everybody's hope is. They're all hoping that they're going to make it, right? But hope is not a plan. Sorry. Hope is going to smoosh you. Like a, what does Kevin O'Leary always say on, on Shark Tank? You're going to get smooshed like a cockroach. <laughs> and that's not going to be me because I've been preparing for this for a decade. You think I said mid-September. Mid-September is when we're going to have the interest rate hike. Problem number one. It should be around 1%, but we'll see. But this is where people keep asking me, David, what is the interest rate going to do? Is it going to be 0.75? Is it going to be 1, 1 1.25? What does it matter? It doesn't matter what the interest rate is going to be. It's going to be high because inflation is high. And so you're going to get smacked down. And if you're not ready, you're going to be in trouble. But it should be around 1%. That's the first trouble. And then the second thing is in September, later September and October, we're going to find out about the food shortages. And once we get the reports of how much food was made in the Northern Hemisphere, we're probably going to have a lot more trouble. And so in mid-September, we're going to get a clear, uh, clear idea of where we're sitting right now. So I expect it to be a lot worse. Um, but let's see. Governments could always pivot. They always have the right to pivot, right? They could flip back and forth, whatever they want to do. If they do pivot, it's going to get better. But it's only going to get better one way. How? The prices will go back up, but they're going to have to start money printing again. So that means you're going to get used to living with a 10 15% inflation every single year. So if we have 10, 15% inflation every single year, who does it hurt? It will destroy the middle class and the poor class and the rich will get a lot richer. Um, how do you prepare for renewal for four years for a mortgage for 400,000? Buy more properties that are making more money. That's how you prepare. I buy properties all the time. I never stop buying properties. But I put, guess how much I put toward money, making money. I put 100% of all my income into producing more income. 100%. And then I live off of borrowed money or money or uh, refinance money. Why would I just spend money right away? If I have money and I spend it on dinner, it's gone forever. Instead, if I have money, and buy something that's kicking off money for the rest of my life, then I can live off of the money that's kicking off and have money forever. I put 100% of my income into money generating things. Freddie, you said, to be honest, you invested it all in real estate. No stocks, gold, silver, not all that wise. So you invested it all into real estate, okay? Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So real estate is the most tax-favored asset class in the world and in history. So if you bought right, it's good. So, you know, when you read online, somebody's always talking about buy real estate, buy real estate. Buy, I, I can't send it. it. actually makes me sick. And I work in the business because in the city of Toronto, they call it the city of 99 neighborhoods or else uh, at least I do. And they're all different areas that have completely different risk profiles. And all of the different areas have commercial, residential, multi-res, uh, multi-res, all different kinds of stuff that is in there. So, and even just saying commercial, well, are you talking about a building with storage and an office in the front? Or are you talking about one where the trucks come in and dump everything on docks? Or are you talking about just a little sliver for a subway to build in? It's all different. It's so nuanced. So if you bought the right types of property that are throwing you off a lot of cash flow and you're not banking it all on appreciation, then you should be fine. So if you bought the right type of real estate, that's fine too. Yeah, Freddie. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Here's the here's the thing. Right today in Toronto, homes in King City are down 50%, 5-0. In Brampton, properties are down 40%, 4-0%. Mississauga down 35%. Absolute shocker. The properties out in in the Maritimes are up 10%. The properties in Alberta are up 10%. What does that tell you? What do you mean? 
how can some properties be going up uh, up 10% and some down 50? That doesn't even make sense. Okay, David, they're in different areas. Okay, let's say the same area. In Toronto, downtown, one bedroom condos, it's like 500 square feet, have not gone down at all, zero. Whereas the big ass houses have dropped 30, 40, 50%. So even in the same market, the different type of properties react differently. So this is where you have to be nuanced, right? Whether it's different markets or not different markets, even if you're in the same couple blocks, buying a subway is different than buying a one-bedroom condo is different than buying an eight-bedroom house if you're on the same block. So it's very, very nuanced. You have to buy the right types of property. Yeah, Freddie. So you might be good. You might be good with your properties. It's okay. Um, Tony, how do you, you prepare for renewal in four years? You should be, be using all your money to either be buying more cash flowing real estate, or you got to be buying, uh, stacking cash, gold, silver, Bitcoin, and everything, and inc improving your credit score while you're there. Also, in the meantime, you could also be looking at your properties. How do I get more rent out of them? If I add a pool, a deck, an extra parking spot, a better kitchen, bathroom, whatever, you're going to raise the value of the property and increase your, your new appraisal amount. London. London's a good place. We have a property that we have up for sale in London right now. Are you meaning London, Ontario or London, um, England? That's different. London, Ontario, I would consider buying in London, Ontario if you're looking at a multi-residential or something like that. If you're thinking of London, England, I would not. Brampton is not down 50%, about 40. We had a townhouse in Brampton that was worth 1.3 million, 1.3, and now it's worth 850. Crazy, right? Okay. Uh, Tosta, Ontario, London, Ontario. Yeah, London, Ontario is good. I would consider London, Ontario. For sure. Not right now, probably, but you just have to find something that's cash flowing a, a pretty good amount, about 0.7 per month. All right. Whew, you guys, you tuckered me out. You guys all started off slowly, but you really came through strong with a lot of good questions. Okay. So seriously, I got to get going in about 10 or 15 minutes. So this is your, your uh, last call. Fire away anything you want, Freddie from YouTube. Anyone from YouTube, you can just put your questions there. Anything uh, TikTok, you can as well. Fire away. So the properties are down. You got to be looking for cash flow right now. This is the opportunity that I've been waiting for for 10 years. Because during an opportunity where everybody is selling, I'm going to be buying the homes up for 50 cents on the dollar. So I've been waiting for this for a decade. So I'm excited for it. I'm going to be buying a lot more properties. So I uh, hopefully you are too. If you do everything right and you're worth ten thousand dollars before, you, now you're going to be worth twenty thousand dollars. If you're worth a hundred thousand, you might be worth two hundred and fifty by the time it's done. So just make sure that you are prepared and keep working at it because you have some time. We're just in the first inning of of a drop. You know, it's going to be for a while. I don't see any indication that they're going to be giving up the interest rate hikes. So this is where you could you could be making like doubling your money easily. Um, Freddie, uh, good show. Freddie, if you don't mind, if you're on YouTube, thank you very much. Uh, if you could follow me on YouTube, I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe, tell your friends about it. If I gave you any value at all, just tell one of your friends that I, I helped you out. Uh, just need to get to a thousand people. Uh, maybe more. I don't know, but I, that's my goal right now is just to get to a thousand. So I'd appreciate it on uh, TikTok, You guys, if you follow me, same name, uh, on, on YouTube, I would really appreciate it. If I give you any help whatsoever, if I give you any value, can you do that for me? I don't ask for money. Just ask for a subscribe. Um, all right, you guys. Well, I said I was at the very, very end. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm. take any questions that you have. Toste, you said you're ready. I like that. <clears throat> I'm ready. I have no muscles. Freddie, thank you very much for subscribing. I really appreciate it uh, on YouTube. It's great. I really want to provide you value, guys. And honestly... I've been doing this for 20 years. I read books every single day um, and I'm in the business. We are buying and selling homes on a daily basis. And so, you know, if you're in the greater Toronto area, of course I can help you out. If you're outside of the Toronto area, we act as consultants when we're buying properties for our clients in, in uh, Calgary. Uh, we do it out in the United States. We do it when we're in the Maritimes. 
So we help them out as well. So I can help you out. But in, in general, I just want to help people. I wish people would teach me or taught me when I was 20 what I know now. I would have retired by the time I'm 25. So, uh, you know, I had a lot of wasted life and I don't want you to waste your life. You got to do things the right way. I have been working on for a couple months, a course. Um, it, I'm going to put it up eventually, but it just takes hundreds and hundreds of hours to write, film and edit. Uh, I don't even know. We're probably going to be in it for 800 hours in it or something, but it's going to be basically everything that I've ever learned uh, and how to put it into just 20 hours. Who do I use in Toronto Crosstown? I don't use anybody in Toronto Crosstown. Crosstown is the name of an individual brokerage, but I'm a broker in Toronto, so I use myself. Okay, Freddie. I'm a real estate broker. I actually I don't even have it. I had a plaque here from Remax with all my awards on it. So I'm a I'm a broker for Remax. We have agents that work and we work every anywhere in the greater Toronto uh, region, but around uh, Ontario, I'm licensed all over Ontario. So that's why I'm selling a property over in um, London and we just did one in Montreal. So I can go a little bit everywhere. Oh, it's an appraisal firm. So there also is a Remax cross town. There's also a real estate brokerage. Uh, for an appraisal firm, we have private appraisers. We don't use an appraisal firm. So this is to a wild. Is that what it says? Sorry, I can't read that. A wild diamonds. What is the best credit score to have in the purchase of the home? The highest, highest, highest that you can go. Absolute highest that you can go. Try to get your credit score at 800. So before you, before you buy a home, you're going to go out. You're going to get your credit score, pay for it, get your whole credit report, and start working on it immediately. The higher your credit score, either the more money they'll lend you or the cheaper the rate. So you got to get your credit score and start working on it right away, like homework. And it could take you months to clear it up. But that'll make you a lot more money. <clears throat> yeah, Freddie, I hate autocorrect too. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know Toronto Crosstown was an appraisal firm. Sorry about that. I just know that the, there's a Remax one like that. Uh, all right, you guys, man, you, you really did, uh, did a lot for me. So before I head out, I don't know if I could do this on YouTube, but there is an option on, um, on some, some of the others, some of the days this week, I'm going to let you on TikTok come on live with me. If you want to ask any live questions to me, you can do that as well. I, I try to come on here every single day now, uh, right around 7 PM Eastern. I'm not going to be able to stay on as long as I did this time. I had to really hustle to be on this time, but I want you guys to come on uh, any time that you have any questions. Uh, I got my new fun uh, pad here where I'm writing it out for you just so that you can see it up here so I can give you an idea of what I'm thinking. Uh, all right, you guys, as you know, I'm a real estate broker. I'm not a financial analyst. I am not an, an accountant, but I could just tell you what we do in all of our companies. Um, all right. If you don't have any other questions, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you very much for coming by. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. Put a lot of time and effort to be here for you guys. And uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for all the gifts. Thanks for the likes. I hope that you have a fantastic night. See you guys.